Just give him a praise offering to that. Amen. Because that's who he is. Amen. I want to give him a praise offering to people. Come on and give him a shout out. Give him the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. He's above depression, amen. He's above loneliness, huh? He's above trouble, amen. He's above all circumstances. He's above all everything, amen. That's the God that we serve, amen. Hallelujah. He's the great I am. Praise the Lord. He made you, he can fix you, amen. amen. Hallelujah. And that's one thing about Jesus, man. He man. <laughs> man, he just everything. He just everything, amen. I mean, God is so good. He, man, he is so good. He is so good. You know what, people, when you're down and out, think about Jesus, man. Think about the one that really loves you. You know, pretty soon I'm going to give that study that uh, Sister Clarice gave to me, which I've done it before, and, and I'm getting myself prepared to launch it out that day because I'm not going to give it today, but we're in the church age now. Amen. We're actually living in the book of Revelation. Yes. Amen. We're in the time of the seven churches. Amen. And within those seven churches, I'm not just going to give you a little paraphrase. You find out the person that you are in the seven churches. There was two churches he was not against. But there was one that loved him much. Amen. There was one that really touched his heart. And that was the church of Philadelphia. Amen. As a matter of fact, I even looked in the book of maps. This city in the Philadelphia, I even I even I even broke down the words that he said about, you know, that a light uh, city on a hill cannot be hidden. And that church of Philadelphia was actually made on a hill. I see the old ruins, and there was a city that was built on a hill. And it could not be hidden. Amen? And that's where how God wants us to be. That you don't have to be hidden from the world. That you are the light of the world. Amen? And you could not be hidden. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to give that message pretty soon because, uh, and I believe it's necessary. And I believe this month we're going to give it. And uh, we need to uh, prepare our hearts. Yes. Amen. Because remember, we don't know when the world's going to end. But I know one thing. The day we die is when the world ends. Amen. Amen. But it's a new beginning. Because there is life after death. But what are we doing with our life now? What are we doing to please Jesus? What are we doing to make him happy? Amen. Are we really working for Jesus? Because there's always time for us to be doing something for Jesus. There's always something to be doing in your home. You know, not, not because, because I know Sandy, and matter of fact, I have, her, I have her room surveillance. I have cameras on her because sometimes Sandy falls off the wheelchair. And I, and I got her cameras hooked to my phone that I can hear everything taking place. I can hear her when she's yelling at that cat and the cat scratching her. I can hear everything, right? I can hear her when she's praying. It's a blessing. But a guy can actually hear her when she falls also. And she won't call me if she could help herself. Well, she calls me when it's an emergency. And I have an emergency button. I said, you know what? You press that button when I know it's an emergency. And it's a doorbell. It's a doorbell camera that I put for emergency because I got like five cameras in the room. Because I, we're not home. I need five cameras tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, if something happens to Sandy, she just can't just, you know, get out of the house and ask for help, right? That's right. But, um, you know, she's, uh, she don't bug me not only when it's an emergency. And I told her one, you know, when you hit that button, y'all are never going to use that button. I'm never going to do it. I, you know, I fall down and I get back up. And lo and behold, she had to hit that button. <laughs> And I got a, a notification about doorbell. It rings on my phone, and what's going on? Come over here now! So I had to drop what I was doing and go assist her. We'll, we'll take care of her. Anyway, what I'm saying, people, there are always something to do. Right. And what I'm saying about Sandy, because she's not in a wheelchair, but she don't see herself in a wheelchair. Amen. And she can tell me this. You know, I'm just using an illustration. And I go. Sometimes me and my wife are we're talking and we're going, man. Is Sandy bored in the house by herself? Is she bored? Is she doing anything? Well, when you look in the camera, this girl is full of life. She's reading the Bible. She's praying. Uh -huh. She's combing the cat. She's talking to the cat. I said, cat, uh, Sandy, the only thing when you're going to do bad is when you're actually talking back to the cat. But, you know, she talks to the cat, and the cat, you know, loves her. And, and she reads her Bible all day, and she... 
watch you, you know, she watches or hears a Christian music. She finds something to do all day. Amen. Thank you. All day. All matter of fact, you know, when you get older, you you, you go to sleep earlier. This girl's still up at one o'clock in the morning. Sandy, man, I tell my nephew because he goes to bed at 7.30 every day. He's already only 25 years old. I go, bro, what are you going to do when you get older? Go to sleep. <laughs> anyway, I'm, what I'm saying, people, there's always something to do in your home. That's Amen. Right. See, God confirmed this message to me today through my grandson. And the message that I was going to give that, that God uses ordinary people. So I looked up 30 people in the Bible that had all defects. Everybody had something wrong with them. But God still used them. Amen. Amen. Remember Moses? Yeah. God put him out. He was a stuttering man. So God said, okay, okay, I'm going to anoint your brother Aaron and he'll be your mouthpiece. He's going to speak to you. But he was a stutterer. Huh? Abraham was too old. Huh? Having a kid at 100 years old. Sarah was 90. They were too old, but God still used them, right? Jacob was a dreamer. He dreamed and he told a story and they didn't believe him. They got jealous of him. And then so on. There's so much people in the Bible that had defects just like you and I. Timothy and Jeremiah, they were young. And they were kind of like, oh man, I'm too young. I can't do this. But God anointed them to do something. Amen? Uh, you see, Paul saw, he had, he, he had an ulcer. No, Timothy had no sir. I mean, so much people. I mean, Sarah. I mean, I mean, um, Rahab was a prostitute. Mm -hmm. Leah, Leah was cross-eyed. She had weak eyes. In other words, she wasn't good-looking. She wasn't attractive. But God still used her. Mm -hmm. Amen. So there's, and then um, Gideon. He was a fearful man. He goes, I'm weakest in the, I'm weak. I'm, we're the weakest in the clan. We're weak in the, we're the weakest in Manasseh. We're, I'm the weakest in my clan. He was fearful, but God still used him. He said, you're a mighty man of valor. Yeah. But I'm not going to use that message today. Because remember, I'm always, God's people that is looking for a word is always trying to hear the voice of God from somewhere. That's right. But God was ministering me while I was in prayer, when I was in my tub, because my tub is my altar. Because, you know, nobody don't bug me. When, nobody, when I'm in the restroom, everybody comes to talk to me when I'm in the restroom. Everybody. Because they got me there. And they could get me whatever they want when I'm in the restroom. When I'm in the restroom, when I'm, you know what I'm saying, right? They talk to me. Everybody talks to me. When I'm in the skin, they got me on the toilet bowl. And they all talk, but when I'm in the tub, nobody comes to talk to me. Because they know that I'm talking to God. So my tub is my sacred area where God comes to visit me. Amen? Right there where me and God, we just talk. And sometimes I don't feel the presence because God wants to feel my presence. Amen? See, one, a lot of times we want to hear from God. We want, we want to feel God's presence because it's a good thing, let me tell you. But just don't ask God to be in his presence. Ask God to be in his glory. You get in his glory, you'll never be the same again. Nobody will convince you different. Nobody can say there ain't no God. Everybody's going to say their opinion and stories about what God is. And you know, there's a God because he came to visit you. Amen. He's brighter than the sun. You can't even open your eyes when he comes in your presence. You're almost at a dying state. But it feels so good. You're going to go, you're, you can't see because he's so bright. You're going, don't go, don't go. But you're like, you're going to die. Because flesh cannot be in the glory. But it's so glorious. Man, it's so wonderful. It's so spectacular. His peace and tranquility is all of this world. You can't even describe it. It is so wonderful. And God's going to take you there. Amen. But what I'm saying to people, you know, there's always something to do. If you're not working, you go be in the presence. Because being in the presence will cause you to get things. Being in God's presence will cause you to get whatever you want in your life. Amen. See, we suffer because we want to suffer. God didn't make you suffer. We want this and we can't have it. You suffer because you want to suffer. That's right. God has his hand out there for you to come and get it. Amen? And it's yours. But we be like Peter. We look to the left and to the right. We look at the winds and the waves, the trials, 
We look at them and we take their eyes off Jesus and that's why we're never able to receive what we want, what we desire. Amen? But what I'm saying, people, that God gave me this message today, it's like I said, I was going to minister on, on God uses ordinary people. But I was hearing in my tub because today, people, the church is being attacked by this evil demon. It's called laziness. That's right. Laziness. That's right. And like I said, I was going to give about ordinary people, but I'm hearing in the tub, I'm thinking about it, why am I hearing this word laziness? Because there's two kinds of laziness. There's laziness in the physical and laziness in the spirit. Amen? But this is what happens, what causes your spirit to be lazy. Because if we don't, if we don't uh, discipline our, our physical body to be active for the Lord, it will cause you to be lazy in the spirit and not want to go to church no more. That's right. Huh? And this evil demon is causing the church to be lazy, to not want to come and praise the Lord, to not want to come to church. But when it's time to go to Magic Mountain, they'll go. But when it's time to go to the beach, they'll go. But when it's time to go to the doctor, they'll go. When it's time to go to the pharmacy to get the medication, they'll go. But when it comes time to, to come and praise the name of Jesus and the spirit, lazy. You see? You see this attack that the enemy is using on the church. We'll do everything else. But when it comes down to serving the Lord in spirit, with faith and happiness and joy and unity and love. And like um, Laura was saying, while being kind to one another, we can't do it. You see? People, God wants you to have everything. As a matter of fact, God, God desires for you to be wealthy. Not wealthy to have money that you're going to lose your salvation. He wants you to be happy to be a giver of everything you have. I pray God give me more money so I can give out more money. Because when you give out more money, more money comes back. Amen? I want to keep on giving, keep on giving people. We're going to get a building very soon. And we're going to beautify it. Huh? And the much as money you've been giving, you, your name is going to be on your own chair. <laughs> Amen. Amen? You bought that chair for the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. But God, let me tell you what. God, God don't like laziness. Laziness is real bad. And it's bad for you, and it's bad for the family, it's bad for the generation to come, and it's bad for even the world. Laziness. I'm not picking on nobody. I don't know anybody's lifestyle. I don't know how you live, but God wants me to give this message to his people. Amen? Because this what happened. All of a sudden, I get out of the, t uh, I get out of the tub, I start to dry myself, I open my door because I'm not gonna change in front of my kids, and my grandkids are under my bed, and I go, Eric, I'm going to change. He goes, Grandpa, I'm lazy. There's my word. God used my grandson there to confirm his message to me. I just told him, I'm going to change. And he's laying on my bed and he goes, Grandpa, I'm lazy. God spoke the word. There it is and here it is. Okay? Listen to this. I wrote these things down. I took from another message that I did. I think I did last year. So I put it together. And, and I created this through the Holy Spirit, amen. Listen to this. Today, many Christians, including, today many Christians, including Christian kids, are struggling with laziness. But it's not because they choose to be slothful and lazy. Some people are always tired because of bad sleeping patterns. Are you listening? It's not because they choose to be lazy, they have just bad sleeping patterns. Staying up all night, and bad eating, thyroid problems, and lack of exercise. See, we know when you're ill, it'll cause, it'll, it'll cause your body to be lazy. We know that too. Amen? Not lazy, but it's like, you're already ill, and then sometimes it has you almost like in a bondage that you can't even do anything. Amen? That's what sickness does. But being in the presence of God will remove that, people. Will remove that. Remember, people, look, when you pray, people, when you go to God and you pray, things come off you. Things come off you. That's right. When you pray, things come off you. That's right. Huh? When, Lord God, I love you, God, I worship you, and he, he's, he's a potter, and you're the best, and, and he's chiseling, and he's molding you. So he's, he's adding things to you, and he's taking things off you. So prayer will cause you to remove things from your life. Right. You have a bad mouth. Prayer will cause for that bad mouth to come off you. That's 
Right. I have not cursed not one time since I came to God. Mm -hmm. Not one time have, have I cursed. Jesus, and people wait for you to cuss. That's right. They wait for you to say something bad. You hit yourself at the jaw, or at the jaw with a hammer or, oh, bless God, hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> you train yourself. That's right. Amen? So no false spirit would not get a hold of you because remember, we give the devil the opportunity. You start giving him the legal rights to invade your privacy. Amen? Some people stay awake all night, go to bed at 5 o'clock in the morning, and sleep all day, burning daylight. Oh. Right now, I can go to people's houses, my family members or other people's houses, and they're asleep. Mm -hmm. huh? A sleep boss, there's money to be made. Huh? Sleeping while the kids should have something to eat, being cooked for them. They're asleep. Burning daylight. Did you know people that hard work pays off in the future? Right. Did you know that doing right. did you know that doing being lazy pays off now? Right. You know what it pays off? Having nothing. That's right. That's right. Hard work will pay off in the future. That's right. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. You work hard and it's gonna show up in the future. If, you're, if we're lazy, it's going to show up now. Right. We have nothing. Mm -hmm. This is to all of us. Amen? I don't want that spirit to have us. I want, you know, God desires for our ministry to always be givers. Not just of money, giving of your time, giving of your smile, giving of your love, sharing whatever you have. Amen? That's why I said this Sunday coming in the public, if you don't got nothing to give, come over. I guarantee you, you'll go home happy. You want to pay the food. Thank you. Amen? Because you will have plenty. Amen? God will make sure of that. But let me tell you what, there's some givers in this ministry. There's some givers. Amen? Amen. And God will supply. Amen. Listen to this. The Word of God has a lot to say on this topic. Let's go to Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21, verse 5 says, Good planning and hard work lead to what? Somebody talk to me. Good planning and hard work leads to what? Prosperity. Amen? But hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. In other words, you can't have to do it. Huh? You got to do it right, even though the owner of the house is not there. That's right. Huh? You got to come and praise the Lord with all your heart, not with half of your heart. You can't be thinking about praising God and thinking about the girlfriend at the same time. You can't be thinking about the football game and going to church at the same time, huh? You can't shortcut. You can't shortcut God. You got to give God your all. Are you listening? Yes. Wealth created by lying tongue is vanishing mist and a daily vapor. The violence of the wicked sweeps them away because they refuse to do what is just. The guilty walk a crooked path. The innocent travel a straight road. Amen? So God has a lot to say about the laziness, spirit of laziness. God sees that laziness is a sin and is also leads to poverty, having nothing, being broke all the time. Huh? Amen? We should never be broke. We should always have... You know what? If we, if we budget our money... Amen. And don't spend more than we make. We'll have, we'll have, we'll, we'll make it in life. You know, we get paid and right away we want to go shopping. Huh? We want to go shopping and we're not thinking about tomorrow. We got to learn to budget, budget what God has given us. Amen? Amen. Don't spend more than you make. If you go get paid and you get paid whatever amount of money and then you go buy a dress that costs a thousand dollars, you're going to be in trouble through the week. Huh? The reason why I say that, because I used to be that fool before. Get paid Friday a thousand bucks and be broke Monday asking my friends to lend me money to buy lunch. It's a shame. I know this because I lived this. That's why I could preach it. Hmm? The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 4, The Lord will, will not let honest people be hungry, but he will let bad people get what they want. Amen? If a man is lazy, he will be poor. But if he does good, he will be rich. Amen? Some people would rather sleep in bed all day 
rather than making making a living. Huh? Yeah. There's things to be d done, people. We could do a lot of things. Uh -huh. You know, people say, oh, Pastor Randy, but, but I don't have a job. And I tell them, I encourage them, I go, well, what do you know how to do? They volunteer. Yeah, you volunteer. But what do you know how to do? What are you creative in? Well, I know how to do this. Well, do that. And I'll guarantee you, God will send the people to buy that off you. Thank huh? Jesus. Remember the widow woman that had her son that he was dying? And what had happened to the prophet? He was hungry. And what happened? What do you have in the house? Some olive oil and some olive jars? Huh? Bring it over here. And what happened? For being obedient and listening to the prophet's voice, she became wealthy. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? She had more than enough. Mm -hmm. So work on something you have. Work on something you have. Amen? Praise the Lord. God will bless it, and then you do what God tells you to do. Amen? People say, I don't have a job. Well, I tell them, well, fix your bed. You know what people, a lot of times people, you know, they, they get into a state of depression. You know what I tell them? You know what I tell them to do? You know what the medicine to depression is? Yeah, Jesus, yes. Get out of your room. Huh? Good word. Good Get out of your room. Clean the house. Go clean the parking lot. Huh? Do something. And it will remove depression. God didn't make you to be sad. He made you to be happy. And depression is ugly. You're on an island by yourself. Get out of your room. Go outside, breathe the air. Thank you, Jesus. And I guarantee you, depression will leave you. Mm -hmm. Loneliness is good, but it's bad also. Amen? Because let me tell you, I like to be alone because I like to be alone with God. But loneliness, you don't have to be alone. You don't have to be in loneliness. Because there's God's people that you can call on the phone. There's God himself that will come and aid you. And God will send his guardian angel to protect you. Matter of fact, I was watching today a true story. This guy, this guy came to rob this lady. Got his gun, and he was, had her at gunpoint, and she came out with the word of God. She was speaking in tongues. She was coming against the devil. That guy was taking things out of his purse, and all of a sudden, the guy just fell down and started going in convulsion and shaking. You know what she did? She didn't leave him. She started praying over him. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Started praying over him because the angel of God protected her and did that to that guy. And um, the guy was shaking and shaking, and she prayed, prayed for him that God will raise him up and, and heal him. And all of a sudden, the guy got up from the ground, and he was in fear of the lady, and he was shaking. He was giving all the things back that he took from her, and she led him to Christ. And he was with his hands up. Amen. 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 You're not alone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. People say, I don't have a job. Well, fix your bed, clean the house, cut the grass, take the trash out. Tell somebody about Jesus. And when you start doing that, depression will begin to live. Huh? Then you start getting the focus and the commitment and the desire back to live for God. They show them that Jesus is the reason for the season, but Jesus is the reason for your hope to live. Huh? I, I said this before, I tried everything in life. The only thing I never did is sit with a man. But I tried everything, and all avenues and all doors were shut. They were closed. But once I fell in love with Jesus, he took me to the next level of life, of happiness and joy. Amen? He's the only one people that you could really trust in. You know, matter of fact, that's, what, that's one of the per, first, first statements in the, in, the, in, in the book of Revelation where it talks about the, the, this, that God has something to give this church. You know why? Because they left the first love. Right, sister? They left their first love. They started loving other things, but they left the first love. When we leave our first love, we're in trouble. You got right. right. Amen. You gotta, you gotta love the number one lover. His name is Jesus Christ. Right. If you want to re be happy, you want to be uh, satisfied, you want to have all the desires of your heart fulfilled. Jesus is the one that's gonna fulfill you. Because He's your true love. He's your true love. He's gonna help you and see you through. Trust in him. Trust in him. When you're trusting in him, you don't have to call up everybody or look for anybody. You just gotta look for God. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
The Bible says in Proverbs 24, 33 and 34, it says, Perhaps you say, I will sleep for a short time. I will put my hands together and I will rest. But while you are asleep, you will become poor. You will become as poor as when a man had robbed you. You will be as a soldier had taken away all your things. The stole soldier was stripped. Oh, you see? That's what sleeping does, people. What was the scripture on that? Uh, Proverbs 24, 33, and 34. Okay, 24. Yeah, Proverbs. 24. Proverbs 24, 33, and 34. Laziness is a curse, but working is a blessing. Like I said, you don't have to work to get paid. Yes, we all we all got to get paid for working, but we got to work to do something. Amen? Praise the Lord. Yes. Clean your house like Jesus was going to come and, and visit your home. Oh, yes. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Amen? But we got to do like Mary also did. Because remember Martha? Mm -hmm. Martha was concerned about the... You know, the washing, the drying, and the dishes, and, you know, vacuuming, and she was concerned about all that, but what did Mary do? She chose to be at the feet of Jesus. So we all got to follow that example. But I'm saying that we always could do something, amen? Laziness, listen to this. I looked these up also, people, in the spiritual dictionary. You know, that's what that's what you do when you study. That's right. You know, you, you find a word, and you want to know what the word is what laziness means and you want you want you want the definition of what you're talking about so i bring it out and i write it down this is laziness is also created by poor culture if the man and the dad the man and the mom is lazy and don't work and don't want to do anything the kid will follow the same example huh? oh yeah are you listening mm -hmm. sleeping all day and having nothing I know some families like that. I'm not going to say their names, but nobody wants to do anything in the house. The kids don't want to listen to anybody. They don't want to do nothing. You go in the room, golly, man, sleeping like a trash can. I mean, it's terrible. I'm not going to say nothing. But why? They follow the example. Some people might know who I'm talking about. But it's a shame. Huh? So true. They don't want to do anything. <laughs> well, my dad and mom ain't doing it. Why should I do it? So that's what it creates. A lazy person is dangerous to the world as a stupid leader to collective, collective intelligence. You see? The Bible says in 1 Timothy 5, 8, but if anyone does not provide for his own family and especially for those of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than the unbeliever. You see? That's, that's how bad it is. If we can't provide for our family, we're worse than the unbeliever. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like I said, I'm just speaking this out there. It could help us. See, people, we never supposed to, uh, oh, that word ain't for me. We just take heed. Huh? We just take heed. Because I remember back in the days when, when my minister, my, my pastor, you know, um, I'm not, say, I'm not saying uh, anything about the way pastors are, but my pastor... Was a black minister and that brother tells the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, I used to tell my, you know, my, my first wife, did you call him up and tell him about me? Huh? Because he told the truth. Huh? He told the truth. Amen? Mm -hmm. And when the, the truth, people, it hurts, but it heals. Amen. The truth will cut us up and it'll hurt you, but it's going to heal you. But if we take heed. We don't say, well, that ain't for me. I'm not going to listen. No, just take heed. Because if we don't take heed, people, we'll go through what, what the whole message was speaking about. Amen? Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen to this. God worked six days, and on the seventh day he rested. Listen to this. God put Adam in the garden. Listen to this very carefully. This is good. This is for you women. God has your man coming. But God's going to give him a job before he gives you first. That's Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. God put Adam in the garden to work and beautify the trees and plant trees first. Amen. See, when, when God made Adam, God made all the trees and all the animals, right? And Adam was like, God, leave. the cow has a cow, the cow has a girl cow, the horse has a, a horse girl, and, and the cat has a, a cat girl cat, and the dog has a, 
a girl, cat, girl, dog, right? And every animal had their meat, right? And Adam went, I'm by myself. But God said, before I give you the woman from your rib, I'm going to give you a job first. I'm going to put you in my garden to tend it. And you're going to beautify my trees, and you're going to beautify my garden, and you're going to beautify my flowers, because when I give you your woman, when I give you a job first, and if you're able to take care of my garden and beautify it, the woman that I give you, then you're going to help beautify her. You're going to make her look beautiful, huh? If she's a little chunky, boy, you're going to tell her, baby, let's go do exercise. Let's go walk around the block a couple of times. You're going to love her unconditionally. Amen? Amen. See, God is going to give you a job before he gives you something else first. He's going to give you responsibility. Huh? And I'm proud of my nephew, Matthew. I go, you got your responsibility back. Huh? This brother be talking about, man, I got to pay my bills. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Huh? I got to pay my water bill, huh? I got to pay my lot bill. And I'm like, listen, you go, why you got to do that, bro? Because my kids are coming over. Huh? I go, praise God, now you're talking, brother, huh? Now you're talking. Somebody got the vision, huh? Commitment and dedication, working and taking care of your bills and doing something. When you start taking care of your responsibility, God begins to give you a little bit more things. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Mm -hmm. Amen. When God gives you some other, when, he, when you're able to take care of the things that God has given you, then God is able to entrust you with something else. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Adam learned how to work and beautify the trees and the plants so he could learn how to beautify his wife Eve. Since the beginning, we were commanded to work. Amen? We're commanded to do something, people. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 3.10, it says, For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Right. Hmm? We got to do something. We got to work. We start with the house first. Huh? We make our home look beautiful for the Lord and for the family. Take care of those things and God will give you. He'll take you to another level. See, God's in charge, people, of your life. He knows exactly what you need. We've got to take care of our health. You know what, people? God spoke to me and told me I, because I repent. And God showed me what I need to repent in. When you repent, people, it means a total turnaround in everything. Huh? When you repent, you've got to repent in everything. Everything. A true repentance, people, is a repenting of everything. In other words, you start caring about your FICA scores, too. Mm -hmm. huh? You start repenting. And, and all those things, people, that we think that are not necessary. A true repentance will cause you to repent in everything. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Are we listening? Yes. Got to show you our true repentance. And our weight. I thank God for my teeth being missing. Because I've already lost more than 100 pounds. Amen. And I'm going to keep on going. Amen. I'm going to keep on going because let me tell you what, getting too big is not bad for your body. It's like having a, a, a Volkswagen motor and a big old Cadillac. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. That motor's not going to be able to carry that car. Mm -hmm. Just like me. Little heart with a big old 500 pound body. That ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. So I have to repent in that also. Mm -hmm. huh? It's not that I eat a lot. I just eat the wrong things, huh? Sugar, soda, mm hmm I love that stuff. But I have to repent in that also. Jeez. Amen? Because I want to live longer to do more things, amen? I want to evangelize. Because that's what my first ministry was, was to evangelize. Because you know what a true evangelist is? He goes out there and wins the people, and then he brings the people over here to the pastor, whoever's in charge of the ministry, that they could be shepherd. That's what you call a true evangelist. Amen? And I want to see that desire, that goal, that gift that God had gave me in the beginning before I became a pastor. I'm going to do that again. Mm -hmm. That's what my desire is. That's why I want to take care of my health. And I want, to, I want to work more so I can walk more. I want to exercise more. And I want to do things more for God. Because mm -hmm. I want to live long, people. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. If my grandparents lived up to 90 or 101 years old, if they did it, then I could do it. Amen. 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 I see my elders here in the church that are still going to church. 
That's what I want to do. That's the testimony I want to be. Huh? Seeing them whatever age, I'm not going to say their age, they're still coming to church. Huh? There's people that are healthy and strong. They're, you know, they got everything. They, they're, they're mighty and big and all, and they can't even come. Who's really stronger? You know what David Wilkinson said one time? He went to uh, Myrtle, he went to uh, uh, Venice Beach, and he went over there where the where guys were, were working out. They were, you know, lifting up all kind of weights, and David Wilkinson, he goes, you're strong, huh? He goes, yeah, how much you could bench? I could bench 500 pounds. Uh, how much could you curl? I could curl 400 pounds. And then David Wilkinson gives him the Bible. Could you pick this up? He couldn't even lift it. He goes, you're not too strong after all. You see? So you're more stronger, people, when you've got God inside of you. Ooh, yes, thank you. You're more stronger when you have the Word of God inside of you. Amen? Praise the Lord. So that's part of your, your work activity, people, Thank you, Jesus. is reading God's love letter, his word. Right. It'll cause you to think different. Mm -hmm. It'll give you uh, visions. It'll give you desires. It'll give, you know, a lot of people say, Pastor Randy, I don't know what my calling. Come to praise the name of God, and God will begin to show you what you're called to do. Mm -hmm. What you're really called to do is to praise and worship him. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the title. God's going to give you that. Because you don't need no title to go tell somebody about God. You don't need no badge, Pastor Randy, to go tell somebody about God. Mm -hmm. You go tell somebody about God. The moment that you give your life to Jesus, the, the moment that you give your life to Jesus, you're in the army of God. Mm -hmm. You're called to serve Him. Mm -hmm. It's a privilege and an honor to be enlisted in God's army. Mm -hmm. Huh? It's a blessing. People, you're going, you're going home to eternity. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. You're going to have an imperishable crown. Matter of fact, all the crowns that God gives you, there's five crowns that God's going to give you. When you make it to heaven, you're going to throw them at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you're going to go to the one that they, they, they won for you, that they, they gave you the victory to make it to heaven. Hallelujah. People that fight for gold, you're going to be walking on gold. Huh? You're going to be walking on the streets of gold. People that kill themselves over that here in the earth, you're going to be walking on top of it. Oh, but I want it now. Well, if it's going to make you happy, God will give you a gold necklace. I'd rather have tools. Huh? Or cooking utensils. Amen. 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 Yeah. I'd rather, that's my wife. We went to Los Angeles. My wife seen these stainless steel. The German lady goes, these things are money back, guaranteed. I mean, I, I seen how much they cost me. You know, pots and pans have cost over $1,000 today. Right. Huh? And she goes, you give me 250 and if you don't like them, bro, you could burn, she even got a torch, start burning for long. Nothing. So I got them. Because that cooks for the family. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I mean, I just see those things just to make us happy. Amen. God is so good. That's why I get so, I, I get so happy about God, man. Mm -hmm. Whatever we want, whatever we want. Yes. Whatever we want, we could get today. Huh? Yes. Oh, they called up my wife Friday and she's going to finally get her car after almost two months. Oh, thank you, Jesus. My wife was on her way to church and she gets hit by this guy. They only had that regular, what's that insurance called? Not a liability. They didn't want to pay for nothing. So I got to pay $1,900 out of my own pocket just to get the car out. But still, God has it Amen. in our hand to go yes, get the car. Yes. Huh? You work hard, people, and it pays off in the future. Mm -hmm. If I was in the curse, sleeping all day, doing nothing, I would have lost the car. I give God the glory. That's why I get so happy because he's so good. He's so good. You have a father. You're not a bastard. Huh? You're not an orphan. You have a father. Huh? Let's do something for God. We're called to do something. Amen? Like people, if you don't have a job, just start asking God to, to show you what to do. Speak to him. Talk to him. Talk to him like you talk to me or to your husband or to your wife or your kids. Talk to him. Let me tell you, he will answer you. I'll guarantee you, people, if you talk to God for seven days and tell God, God, I want to see who you are, I'll guarantee you. I'll guarantee you. But don't sin. Don't be impatient. I'll guarantee you, if you talk to God for seven days, it might happen the second day. It might happen the same night. Right. To get this ministry back in bed before I went to go fasting and prayer. And I thought on the third day, God would have, I'm going to go up there for the fasting and prayer. And the third day, say to your angel, God, are you coming to speak to me? The next day it happened. That's why we started this ministry here in Bakersfield. Huh? See, 
God knows that you're going to be able to do those seven days. He already knows. But if you're honest with him, people, he will speak to you. I don't care how poor you are. I don't care how sad you are. I don't care how depressed you are, miserable you are. You love God. You put him above all the way you're feeling that moment, people, and you're trusting God. I'll guarantee that God will come and reveal himself to you. Amen. Huh? Yes, he will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank and you'll never be the same again, people. I don't get discouraged if it's only two or three people coming because I know who's here. That's right. Huh? Huh? I know a lot of times they don't call you. I don't know if the Word of God says that. I tell the truth, people. I tell the truth. I, I tell what, the way I was raised in the Lord. You've got to tell somebody the truth. You sin, you're going to die. The Bible says the, sin, the wages of sin is death. Amen. You know, we're out there sexual sinning. Yeah, we die because we're got sexual disease, you know, and, and sex. But you can still live and go to heaven because the ways of sin is dead, meaning that you're not going to die and go to hell by, by catching the disease. No, God's going to give you a period of time to live. Huh? Like I said, I have a friend in, in Fresno. She should have been dead. Uh, what? They gave her like a year to live. It's been 30 years. She has 32 tumors, tumors all over her body. Doctor, no, you're going to die. You only got a year to live. The tumors are going to grow. Huh? She's still living. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And she's praising the Lord. And nobody even tells her, what about the tumors? Because you don't go speaking about the problem. Right. You praise God. If you see her happy, then leave her like that. That's right. If you see her praising God, leave her victorious. Don't go telling her what she has. She already knows she has that. Right. Don't go reminding her about what she has. If she's happy and serving God, then you'll be happy and serve God with her. Yes. Glory to God. That's right. You never stop a plan. Never stop a plan what's happening Ooh, with on. God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God loves you, people. And I'm just sharing you with you people. I'm just condemned with this. That hard work pays off in the future. Yes, in your own home. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell this to the world. But I believe that every woman has a harder job than anybody. A woman has a harder job. Just being a mother of the house is a hard job. I salute the women in their job, their bravery. You know, yeah, God made Adam first, but if it wasn't for God anointing the women, we won't be here either. But I salute the women. I congratulate you women with high respect and honor for putting up with us, amen, and for being there for us, amen, for cooking our food for us, for washing our clothes. For folding our clothes, amen. Thank you, for having dinner for us when we come home, huh? For making our bed, for waking up at two or three in the morning when the babies are sick. Thank you, Jesus. I salute you and honor you mm -hmm. for your purpose of living, amen. Yes. You guys did a wonderful job, and we're going to see you in heaven, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray, Father. We thank you, God, once again, Father. We thank you, God, for the word, God. We thank you, God, that we become people, God, of activity. That we become a people, my Father, God, to do something, to do your will, my God. We're not looking to get rich, God, because we know the richness, God, wealthiness could take us away from you, Father. But, God, I pray, God, that you'll give everybody here exactly what they need, Father. That you will always be first in their life, God. That we'll not lose our salvation or money or treasury or or gold or jewelry, God, but God will always have you first, Father. We don't want to lose our first love, God. We always want you to be the number one of our life, God, that God, that we will make it to heaven, God, that we will be like the church of Philadelphia, Father. Unspotted, unblemished, unrequited, Father. And I pray, God, that whatever attack, God, the enemy has has uh, created, God, because we know the enemy has has meetings in the nighttime, in the wee hours of the night, God. They have strategy posts. They have activity going on, God, to discourage us, God, to bombard us, God. They have they they, they have a meeting, God, to, to distract us, God, to bring stumbling blocks at us, God, to, to make us fall away, to be tempted, God. God, I pray right now, God, that your spirit, God, will help us, God, not be lazy, that we'll be able, God, to fight against the enemy, Father God. Because we know, God, through laziness, God, it will, Father God, it will stop us from being victorious, Father. And God, I pray right now, my God, that your, your anointing, God, that breaks all yoke, God, will fulfill us and energize us, God. And give, give us a shot in the arm, God, of the Holy Ghost Spirit, God. 
that we can be alert, God. I pray that this day, God, you'll anoint everybody here, my God. It could be aggressive in your spirit, God. They'll be alive forevermore, God. And God, today, God, whatever they're going through, God, is going to be dismissed. Because I know, God, that whatever I said, God, you're going to speak to your people, God, and you're going to help them even better, God, in their long time with you, Father. We thank you, we bless you, and we praise you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Yeah. But if anybody needs prayer right now, now's the time for we could pray with you one-on-one, -on -one. Amen, because we never want to leave this place, people, because we believe in laying on the hands of the eldership, Amen. I'm not the only one that prays for people. There's people here that love to pray, like Sister Rosie right here. She's the future pastor here in the church. And she, she waits her turn, and she loves to pray for the people. She loves to pray for and she will And she'll make sure, people, that uh, you'll go home feeling good. We know Ramona loves to pray for people on the phone, Sandy, Clarice, and her dog. They love to pray for people. We know there's people here that love to pray for people. Amen. We got, matter of fact, we should create a, create a prayer team. Matter of fact, you confirmed that to me when you sent me that text about, you know, being partnership in prayer. Huh? Because Ramona, she'll call you up if she, if she wants, if she needs somebody to come in agreement with her to pray for somebody. Because you know people, they want you agree or pray for something, there's power. Yeah. Did you know that disagreement is powerlessness? Right. You know that? When, this, when we disagree, it creates powerlessness. But when we agree, power is released. Power of God. And that's why you're here today, people, because it was God's power that brought you here. Because sometimes you don't even want to get out of bed. Huh? You don't even want to get out of bed. You want to stay home, people, because you're tired. You've been beat up all week long. Huh? I know my sister Clarice, and, you know, she fell not so long ago, and she, she's hurt. I know it's a struggle just, just to get over here, but because it's the house of God, she makes her effort to be here. Amen? I know there's a lot of people here that have been on the hell and back been to the war, your warlords, you're all beat up, but you're here. And that's the power Thank that God has given you. Amen. Amen. And now I'm going to end with this. And it's a true statement, people. If we come to God's house, God will go to your house. Amen. He'll go to your house. You know, we want God to do many things and we don't even come to visit him. Amen. See, even though, you know, I'm not the best preacher, I could put five people to sleep. Rosie could put one. <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know what? But whatever I say, there's something that you're going to pick up that's going to help you, right? There's going to be something that was spoken out of my mouth that's going to help you. Just one couple of things, a couple of words that I spoke that's going to help you. Because you have the Holy Spirit that's going to reveal things to you later, and it's going to help you even more. Amen? Does anybody need prayer that we can pray with you right now? Pastor, I need prayer 